Hi, I'm Darlene Carmen, and welcome to the show. With the latest social media platforms, seems like everyone is a video maker. Shoot some video, edit, embellish with text, graphics, and you can share your creative genius. With the ease of this process, you may have the impression that a transition to mainstream film production is easy. Ha! Andrew Chin's short production, Ghost in the Gun, has received awards in four screenplay competitions. Andrew is here with one of the producers of the film, Tony Jonick. Hey, welcome to the show. Thanks Good for having you. us. It's Hello. great to be here. Yeah. Thanks. It's lovely. So, now, don't give anything away, but what is the film about? It's about a man who's left for dead in the desert, and he comes across um, a possessed gun. And it transforms him into a gunslinger bent on revenge. But unbeknownst to him, it has its own vendetta. Mm, sounds exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so just to give us an idea of what it's like to shoot a film like approximately 15 minutes, a mm -hmm. short production. So like, how many days did it shoot the film? How many scenes are there? And how many different locations? So there was 14 days total. Um, <laughs> one of them we had to kind of scrap because of the weather. And then the 14th day was a pickup shot shoot which means uh, we were just like getting some close-ups and little things to help kind of round it out. Um, so all in total, it took about seven weeks. We started in huh. October and finished in November. Mm. And how many scenes totally? Oh, so there's uh, 18 scenes, um, but some are go to a flashback and then come back, so I think technically maybe it's 15. And locations? So we had uh, like five locations. Five locations. And how did you find these locations? What were they? Oh, they took a while to, to find. I mean, it took um, maybe half a year for the pre-production for us to go through all the different locations. Because people would um, you know, give us some leads, and we would have to go check them out. But some were kind of too modern, because they were for tourists, so they had like lights and um, you know, pavement and asphalt. So, um, but we ended up finding a bunch of good ones that were actually not too far away. Um, like one of them is the Reinstein Ranch up in, um, in Livermore. Mm -hmm. And then there was like Three Steve's Winery also in Livermore, um, and then uh, sort of like the, the, the gold that we found was, <laughs> it was in Hollister, is this um, private ranch that had like its own like western town, like authentic <laughs> old western town that they built. So we, we shot there, and then we also had um, another shoot down in Trona Pinnacles, which is near Death Valley, and then um, finally we had one in a, in a barn wow. in Tracy. Wow. That's a lot of different locations. Yeah. A lot of things, yeah. We have a lot of footage of Andrew and uh, some other folks doing location scouting all up and down the, <laughs> out into the boonies. Um, there are a few ghost towns where some people shoot, but these are places that um, were local that we were able to find, and it was quite a find for this, us. This private ranch now, you said it's a ghost mm -hmm. town and it's a private ranch, so but, you're going to tell me they rented out. Do you know the name? Um, well, Fox name? Creek Ranch uh -huh. out in mm -hmm. Hollister. Um, they have, uh, they rent this western town out for things like weddings, corporate events, stuff like that. Uh, we were sort of the first movie crew to come out there and do shooting. And it was <laughs> wonderful. We had to um, get all the electric lights pulled down. We had to um, stage in areas that we couldn't see and stick to the buildings that were a little more authentic. Some of them had like modern barbecue pits and things and we had to just sort of work around <laughs> some of the stuff that's there. But I think it looks fabulous. Yeah, but I think they took the wood from authentic buildings from that time period mm -hmm. to build the town. So, and they, the owners really wanted it to be as, you know, period as possible. You know. That's pretty exciting. I've n I've never heard of this. So they rent the place out. The, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, and and this this place, uh, Pinnacles, Trona, you said. Yeah, Trona, Trona Pinnacles. Um, is that like a park? Is that like a government? You know what kind yeah, of place? Yeah, yeah, it's a national, national park. park. Yeah. So you can get um, a license to film there from the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management. And so we were there for like a long weekend, and we shot there for three days. And I, I bet that's kind of hairy. You have to like. Uh, you know, clean up the area and keep everything spotless or something? Yeah. Or, well, what about the tourists, the, the hikers and stuff? That you, how do you deal with them? Do they, are they not allowed when you're filming? or? Well, no, because you, you, you can't control the whole park because it's a public park. But um, the good thing is, at that time of year, there weren't too many tourists. And the park is huge. So oh, we would just scout oh. out areas that were a little bit more removed. Ah. Um, so it, it would, turned out not to be a problem at all. But it was a great location. 
Yeah, ah. the thing about it though is it is wild land. It is desert. There are sand places where vans can get stuck. <laughs> and uh, it takes a while to pull them out sometimes. <laughs> Sounds um, like experience it talking here. <laughs> yes. We had, uh, it, was, it was really a very cool place. Mm. And um, it looks just fabulous on oh. film. This is, a, this is a place that a lot of shows will film mm. out here, but uh, yeah, the old new shots. Yeah, the old Battlestar Galactica show used it for some of the alien terrain. <laughs> and I know Star Trek's used it a few times. It's like many movies and TV shows use that place. Well, I was looking at a little bit. I couldn't see much, but it looked, it reminded me a little bit of Australia. Mm. I forgot the place in Australia that I was mm. thinking about, but they have like these ant hill type things, and I mm -hmm. saw some of this landscape, and it reminded yeah. me of <laughs> Australia. So, it's, it's part of the magic of film is that our person who wakes up from being attacked by the bandits, he walks through a little bit of land in Hollister, he ends up in Death Valley, he walks <laughs> a little further, he's in Livermore. <laughs> he comes back to yeah. Hollister, and that's it's just it like, and yeah. that's seamless. It's very seamless. <laughs> Tony, what is it about Andrew's grip that attracted you? Sure. Um, Andrew and I were working on a film set together a couple years ago now, and um, I was asking him what he was interested in, and um, somebody in the film co-op that we are members of was going to do a Western film, and that person decided not to, and Andrew said, well, I've been kicking around this idea, he showed me his script. Um, we were filming in Half Moon Bay, and there's a western town there. And he what? said, well, I'm thinking of doing <laughs> this. Maybe we can get some horses. It should just be a little thing. We should be able to <laughs> do this in a couple of weekends. Oh, sure. And, um, <laughs> and I read the script, and it's just like, oh my gosh, I've never seen this before. It's not only a western, it's a supernatural thriller. Um, the characters in it are very strong and vital, even if they're, some of them don't talk as much as others, mm -hmm. but um, with the actors we've got, it's just gripping. It's so you like lovely. westerns? I do. And your background, you also write screenplays, I think I read about you, I and do. Yes. poems, um, and what um, else? Yeah, a fair bit of writing, so I, I like to think I know good stuff when I read it. Mm. <laughs> and ah. uh, definitely Andrew's script is fabulous. So you kind of read that and it just kind of like... Like, like oh it. my gosh, what we can do yeah. with this. <laughs> Little did I know. Yeah, I remember sending uh, Tony an early draft and he gave me some good feedback, which ah. I incorporated. So. Ah. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Well, yeah. it's nice to have well-connected people that know what to look for. Yeah, definitely. And, yeah, super. Now, you have some top-notch uh, actors and you yes. have a very lively crew that mm -hmm. helps you out here. So we have some pictures. Mm -hmm. I would love to see some pictures. And... Um, you can just tell us and fill us in as we okay. go. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Let's see the first picture, if we can. All right, so that is um, Haley Camille on the left. She plays Joe. And on the right is um, Darren Bridget, who plays Krug. Um, they're terrific actors. I mean, I have to say, like, there was some really amazing local actors that we found. Um, and these two are two of the main sort of anchors for the film. Mm -hmm. Darren Bridget was in the film uh, Fruitvale Station mm. and um, received a lot of kudos for that. And we were lucky to get him because he plays somebody who goes through this transformation. And during the acting process, we watched him build up these gunslinging skills where he was swinging this gun around. He knew what he was doing. And it's like all of his journey as an actor was wonderful to see. And then we've worked with um, Haley on a couple of other small mm, films, yeah. and she's right. just a she's amazing. sweet and a very good yeah. actress. She actually recently did a project with uh, Francis Ford Coppola, so hopefully wow. we'll see that in a little while. Wow. And she's young. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's very terrific. Young. Um, and then if you want to just put up the next yeah. picture. So then, um, yeah, like we did uh, <laughs> some interviews, or, or uh, the casting process. We found some great actors like Christopher Weddle here. Like, he's done a lot of stage work, and he was like, he nailed, you know, Scarface when, uh, mm. when he was doing his audition. Uh. Um, and I got to talk to him extensively, and he was kind of doing research on, you know, actual bandits back then, and, you know, coming up with a backstory for his character. So it was, it was really terrific to work with him. He works with the stage um, department of UC Berkeley for their play production. Oh. And um, I've just been so impressed by him. Uh, we're looking at uh, possibly casting him in another film coming up. Great. Let's see the next one. So this is um, Bruce Duncan. He plays Rattlesnake Dick. So he's um, the second of the three bandits 
He never broke character. No. <laughs> <laughs> he was tough all the way through. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, really um, did a great job in uh, the saloon and shootout scenes. And then let's see the next one. And who is this? Oh, this I don't guy know. looks familiar. Some old sourdough. <laughs> so this is Tony, who you know, our producer here, who also played one of the bandits. He played Coyote Gus. Um, and it was a lot of fun to, to have him both behind and in front of the camera. Yeah, I, my character took a few too many punches in the head. <laughs> I mean, he, he, so his character is a little bit like the lovable oaf that you know fell in with the wrong crew. But, but yeah. Still vicious. <laughs> Still vicious. Just like real life. All right, let's see the next one. Ah, so this is uh, Jamie. She played um, Krug's wife, uh, Carolina. So she did a great job, too. And um, I felt a little bit bad, like, you know, <laughs> you know, having her being beat up a little bit. But she did, <laughs> she did a great job, and her screaming was so authentic and on point. Um, and she's just lovely to work with. She was a wonderful actress, beautiful woman. And then to see her just covered in blood and makeup, it's oh, just like, oh, <laughs> yikes. Oh. Uh, yeah, so let's see the next one. Ah, these guys. So on the right is Ross Turner. He plays uh, Marshall Hicks, who's, um, you know, one of the antagonists. And his deputy on the left, uh, played by Logan Wildey, um, Deputy Barnes. So those two were great as well, like, because um, this shot is from one of our key scenes. And uh, y you'll get to see it. Uh, I think a little bit of it in the uh, trailer. One of the nice things we did um, with Ross is that uh, he did this scene uh, towards the beginning of the production, and then when he came back at the end of the production, he let his beard grow out to show <laughs> that time had passed. Uh. And um, his clothes are similar but different. Okay. And um, uh. and he was really good. He's a local comedian, actually, and he does a lot of work. Comedian? As well. Wow. Yeah. You wouldn't know it just looking at this. <laughs> no, he was, he was tough. Yeah. yeah. Let's see the next one. Ah, and this is Tim Russ. Um, you probably know him better as Tuvok from Star Trek Voyager. Oh, yeah. So, yes. yeah, this was sort of our um, coup de grace, would you yes. say? <laughs> our celebrity <laughs> catch. Yeah. Mm. So, um, Tony suggested to me, like, early on, you know, we should try to find a more high profile actor that, you know, that we can use. But obviously, since it would cost a lot more to, you know, fly them up here, like, sure. maybe we could use them as, the, you know, the voice of the gunslinger in the voiceover. Excellent, excellent. Um, and, you know, I was like, oh, I don't know if we can do that. But as it turns out, we had some connections. We were able to contact him. And he read the script, and he, you know, graciously accepted it. it. Yeah. Wow. So wow. we had a voiceover recording session with him down in Burbank um, in May. And, yeah, and he is, you know, totally professional and, like, just nailed it. We were, like, out of there within an hour. Oh, wow. Um, and it was just fun to see him do, like, all the lines in, like, as many different, you know, ways as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so that was great to have him. One of the things we've talked about is trying to turn this into a series and he has made an agreement that if it does turn into a series he gets to develop this character somewhere with us. Great. Yeah, so nice. that's quite a coup. Yeah. Let's see the next one. So you can see uh, Tim Russ on the right with um, our director of photography Stephen Burke on the left. So Steven is responsible for the, the look of the film mostly, like, because he um, did such amazing shots, and it's just why it's so beautiful. Um, and it was so great having him on set. He just always does an amazing work. He knew what we needed. He knew what yeah. we needed for lights. He knew what we needed for cameras. Um, and we were able to work with him on that to get that look and feel that is incredibly professional. It's just mm. gorgeous out of here. Yeah. And luckily, he was in L.A. when we were doing the um, recording session with Tim Russ, so he's, he swung by. Wow. Let's see the next one. Uh, and this is <laughs> Sam, Samantha Purdy, our other producer. She wasn't able to join us today, but maybe we can have her uh, on some other show. But she was, she, you know, she was also, like, one of our anchors. Like, she arranged for, um, like, the cast and crew, like, and location, and just did a lot of the logistics that were just, she's a miracle worker. She's a young lady from New Zealand, yes. and um, one of the things about when if you're a good producer, there's not so much to do on the day. So um, she was ending up actually uh, taking care of some of the horses mm -hmm. um, when the horse stands around all day. Uh -huh. Certain things happen, uh -huh. and she's going. This is the glamorous world of movie production. Well. 
looking at her except for what's on her belt there, I kind of thought maybe she was in the production. She was. So she was one of the background actors. Ah, so we she, yeah, she pretty much did every single <laughs> role that we had in the, the movie. She could have probably made this whole movie by herself, like She's doing a everything. Yeah. Just amazing. And we always tease her about her New Zealand accent and all of her little Kiwiisms. <laughs> we had to be sure we had Vegemite on set. Oh yeah, Did it, we have she more definitely keeps that, it is lively. That, is that, no, yeah. so we, we have some more pictures about oh. like um, locations. Okay. So this is uh, a picture of our crew when we were shooting at the uh, Hanging Tree. So this was in the Reinstein Ranch out in um, Livermore. Yeah. Uh, and you can see me in my, my blue vest, which I became <laughs> notorious for. It's a cooling vest, and uh, people just thought I was wearing it for um, you know style, but actually it was practical. And so you know it has these like gel packs in there to keep you cool <laughs> during like the hot you know summer shoots. Yeah. But yeah. Sam would always make fun of me and tease tease me merc mercilessly, and uh, her and, and Stephen were, were always giving me uh, making jokes about me. So we we developed this sort of like. You know, Team Andrew. You know, <laughs> Team everyone else. <laughs> but I would, I would, um, you know, put it on some people and let them try it out. And you know, and I was slowly converting people, and they were coming to my side. And like, wow, <laughs> this is actually really nice. I There's one myself. affectation as a director. <laughs> Otherwise, he was incredibly humble on set. But you can, you know, tell that I was the director. And then let's uh, see the next picture. Yeah, and here's a shot of kind of like when we were actually shooting like what the setup looks like you know you can see all the cameras and reflectors and yes. all that stuff yes and then next so here is where we we're setting up for the barn scene and you know we had plenty of smoke which really added to the ambiance uh, you can see like our sound crew in the foreground there and you can see the bandits on the ground um, so it was a great location that you know actually I didn't know where we were gonna shoot the week before but we were able to scout it out real quick Ah. Um, through one of our connections. Yeah, and this it, is Lone Tree Ranch um, out in Tracy. Yeah. And um, our stunt coordinator uh, had worked with them before, and I'd, I'd shot a film out there as well. Yeah. Um, and Ooh. they are wonderful, wonderful people. Ah. Yeah. Let's see the nice. next picture. So this is also the barn scene. We were setting up for the scene with the dog. So you can oh. see um, the resting. mango, yeah, <laughs> in the middle there. He's tired. Resting, yeah, he's just resting. resting next to Haley. And then on the on the right, you can see um, Beverly Ulrich. She was like, uh, she's the dog trainer, and she's also known as the pooch coach. Um, so those two did a you know a great job Aww. for set, and you can see like um, Steve and I talking about you know setting up the shot. Neat. My daughter, who's a dog lover, was worried that we see the dog get hurt, and it's like no. No, but not gonna happen. But you know no. what happens. Yeah. So yeah. next. Okay, so this was at Fox Creek. Um, this is the outdoor scene where we we're doing the shootout. So you know you can see it takes a lot of people to yes. shoot a film. Yeah. And on the mm -hmm. far right you can see um, Darren Bridget, and you know we're setting up for a sort of a what they call like a, a push in like a, a dolly shot. And. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say that um, one of our last days that we shot, uh, the sun moved so quickly across the sky because it was late fall, almost winter. Yeah. And so the lighting crew had to spend the whole day just bouncing that sun around so that it got us exactly what we wanted. Wow. And um, no. they worked so hard. I've never seen a lighting crew work so hard. Yeah. Wow. But we, we had so many great shots from that location. So let's see the next one. Ah, and here we're doing practicing a stunt for uh, one of the night flashback scenes, uh, and you can see Tony on the far right. But um, before it gets dark, we were we were doing practicing, you know, pulling uh, Darren Bridget, who's play who plays Krug. So you can see the three guys um, behind him. Yes. So we did that a few times until we got it right and we got the timing right, and then uh, then we waited for it to get dark and we shot that scene. Wow! I think this is the last picture wow. that we have. Well, it's pretty cool. Yeah. You, you oh, actually, oh, this oh, one oh, more. Oh. Sorry, I forgot about this one. <laughs> this is Toronto Pinnacles. So you can see in the background. Yeah, like, see those things back there. <laughs> yeah, those are the pinnacles. So it ma makes oh. the train look very, you know, alien and harsh. Yes. Uh, that's why we, we really wanted to shoot here. Like yeah. Steve and I were, were dead set on, on shooting in this location, and we were able to pull it off. Thanks Damn to the Sam. expenses. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it was great. Yeah. I mean, it was so worth it. Looks a little bit like what I saw in Australia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, just you know, before. It so was, this is the last one? Yeah, this is the last picture. Uh, you know, I, I read some of your interviews online, and there was mm -hmm. one that I found very funny. It's that you wanted to have a prop vulture mm -hmm. that was important to you, and you were upset at the time because you couldn't have it. 
Why did you need the vulture? <laughs> well, you know, since I also wrote the script, like there's certain <laughs> things in the script I really wanted to have. And yeah. one of them was the vulture because in the scene that was originally written, um, it gets shot and it sort of symbolizes, you know, cheating death and all that stuff, which, you know, as a writer, I'm like, oh, yeah, I really love this and thematic. But um, Throwing a vulture. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But it, as it turned out, it was difficult to find a prop vulture and we weren't <laughs> able to do it. I mean, we there were many vultures like flying in the sky that yes. we, we could, you know, film, but yeah. we needed one that we could actually, you know, have on the ground, but it just, just didn't happen. And so I had to, you know, come up with like an alternative and just change the scene on the spot, which we did, and I think it turned out much better. We went so far as to scout for a robotic uh, yes. gliding vulture yes. that one company makes, and they go, yeah, we'll have it to you in three to six months. <laughs> and it's like, no, I don't yeah. think so. <laughs> Thank don't you. have the time. With plenty of vultures, but vultures like to go in groups. We didn't realize that. Oh. And so finding a single vulture wasn't wasn't quite possible, yeah. unfortunately. Now you told me to make a movie. You, it's like you're doing it three times. Yep. You write it, and then you shoot it, and then you edit it. So which part would you say is the most difficult? Well, they all have their challenges, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, when you write it, um, yeah, I mean, you, you picture like how it's going to be filmed, but it, you know, it doesn't always turn out that way exactly. You know, like um, so when I first wrote, when I did a first draft of the script, I went to a, a writers group and we did a table read. And before um, we actually started doing the reading, I was unsure like how it was going to be received. Like they may think this is, you know, utter crap, but <laughs> you know, but you know, we read it and they loved it and like they, I got a lot of good feedback. And it's sort of an iterative process. You know, and I developed a script over a few months, you know, to get it just right, and then, um, and then we did started pre-production, looking for locations and actors and that sort of thing. Um, so for the production part, where you're actually shooting the film, has its own different set of difficulties because you know, um, <laughs> you have like the environment, like you know, we shot with some animals, like with a uh, dog, some horses, uh, and you know, locations, and there's all sorts of you know variables that you have to deal with that you just have to. Um, figure out on the fly sometimes. And so that, that was the challenging part about production. And then post-production um, has its own challenges, especially with the editing part. Because mm. you know you have the picture of how you want the script to be, and then you have what you actually shoot. And then editing, you realize sometimes like the pacing or the way you thought it would be uh, doesn't quite work out in the way that you thought. So then you take what you have, and you kind of massage it. And there's a lot of good editing techniques that you can use to you know make the pace better or like you know heighten the you know the drama and the and like the different moments that you need well then you got to add the special effects and the mm -hmm. sound and all of that yeah. i have no idea what that right. takes but it sounds pretty hairy so all in all which one would you say was the most are they equal or you know which one was the hardest if i can add something and when you first start writing it you go oh my gosh i have an infinite budget you've got an audience of one <laughs> and it can be anything you want. But film is such an amazingly collaborative art that the mm -hmm. minute you start bringing other people in, they start bringing in things that you didn't know you had. It's, uh, like, yeah. it's like a potluck. Yeah, and true. so the minute we had our DP in, he's going, let's try this. And you look at it and you go, oh my god, I never even thought about that. Ah, uh, yeah. yes, I keep yes. Takes a team. Um, yes. And, um, then when you get to the editing stage, and they're not necessarily people that were out there, but you start working with a composer, and it's something unless, you know, even if you know how to do some music, mm -hmm. they're going to bring all of this stuff to it that you never even considered. And you can look at a film with three different soundtracks, and they're totally different films. Mm. And so this is the director's job, but it's also everybody brings such wonder yeah. to the project. And this is what made this such a fabulous project. You know, we're project. getting a little short of time, of course, and yeah. I want to make sure that we see the trailer. So if we can move on to the trailer. All right, let's <laughs> take a look. Yeah, that's exciting.
Ooh, the mood, you know, the mood is really there. Who is responsible for making the trailer? Sam, actually. So um, Patrick, our editor, was busy on actually editing the film. So Sam, who, who's an editor the also. Yeah, and the she, producer. She's a producer. Yeah, but she's also an editor in her own right. So she, she did the uh, trailer for us. The whole thing? Yeah. She's responsible for hmm. I, I didn't know who was responsible for that. And we, we're just really running out of time. But Tony, I wanted to know, what was your favorite day of shooting and why? A little short version, The maybe. first day that we got onto Fox Creek Ranch and we had all of the costumes, all of the people, um, all the gear, and it was just made this town come alive. It was a series of buildings and then it became a western town. We're serving food in the mess hall. We've got everybody there. And just to see it all come together. So was it just, just felt beautiful. like this is it. This it's is happening really now. It. Yeah. Now, where can people see the film? So uh, and when, I guess. When that would be a good <laughs> question too, huh? <laughs> so it's gonna. We should be done at the beginning of next year, and then uh, we're gonna premiere it locally in San Francisco um, at the Scary Cow Film Festival in the Castro Theater, and then after that, we're hoping to take it to different film festivals. And that'll all be on your website. Yep. You know, I had more I wanted to talk to you about. Um, Andrew, can you come back and do another show with us? Maybe oh, you could definitely. bring. Definitely. Yeah, bring a couple more people that we could meet. I mean, a I after the, the premiere. I have just the people in mind. Okay. And all of this will be on the website so people can check that, yep. right? Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here. It's so nice thank meeting you. Thanks for you. having us. And ah, I can't wait for the sequel. There will be a sequel. So thanks for watching the show. Check the website for details on when is the premiere and a lot of things on there to check. So thanks for watching the show and watch again.